Good morning once again. Welcome to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. As always, every morning on the show, we like to take you back a few years ago um, in history. And today, the 16th, or 15th rather, of January, um, we're looking back at 1966. Uh, was, was something that eventually led to uh, the Nigerian Civil War. It was uh, tagged the Igbo coup, even if there's a lot of people who wouldn't agree. But it was on this day that uh, two people, and uh, they, of course, named uh, Chukuma Kaduna Nzogu and Emmanuel Fedrina, um, led the coup that uh, led, of course, to the killing of uh, the Prime Minister back then, Tafawa Balewa. Uh, while Namdi Azikiwe was out of the country. It also led to the death of 22 people, including Nigeria's Prime Minister, like I earlier mentioned, many senior politicians and um, army officers. Um, unfortunately for them, this coup was unsuccessful. And um, eventually, due to a lack of you know, proper communication, uh, General Agui Ronsi, who was the general officer commanding uh, of, the, of Nigeria back then, he took over power. He was in Lagos at the time that this, all this happened. He eventually then took over power. But this is where there was a little bit of controversy. Um, after he took over power, there were then insinuations that it was pre-planned and all of this was pre-planned so that Agu Yironsi, who was also from the southeast, will take over power. As always, every coup that you hear about, you know, most, you know, most African countries and maybe also across the world is always blamed on corruption and a failing economy and that the persons in uh, positions of power are mismanaging the, co the country. Um, and this one wasn't in any way different. So Aguirre Ronsi was in power for only a few months before he was uh, killed in a counter coup. It's a very sad, uh, if you look at the stories and look, um, you know, at the, um, um, you know, look back in history, uh, the way that Aguirre Ronsi was killed along with uh, Fajui, who was the um, governor then in, in Ibadan. A really, really sad um, um, way that they were killed. But anyway, that's not part of the story. Uh, so yes, there was a counter coup that eventually led to the ouster sometime in July. Um, um, what else? Yeah. Um, so yes, other parts of this story that I found interesting were some of the people who took part in the counter coup that I will also mention. And that uh, were, of course, uh, Theophilus Danjuma, Muhammad Buhari, Murtala Mohammed, Sanya Bacha, and Ibrahim Babangida. They were some of the major components in the counter coup that eventually led to the killing of Aguirre Ronsi and uh, Fajui um, sometime in July that year. Theophilus Danjuma apparently was uh, seen as the person who led the counter coup and led, um, of course, uh, soldiers to uh, Fajui's residence where Aguirre Ronsi was at that time. And so, yes, it was on this day uh, that. The um, coup of 1966 happened, led by Chukuma Kaduna Unzogu and uh, mm. um, Emmanuel Ifeajuna. Yes, I think this is a very, very interesting, <clears throat> was a very interesting time in that country's history. Was I born then? Let me see. Um, I, don't, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, of course you 51 <laughs> years ago, just how much have we learned, you know? We've seen statesmen in the country speaking to this issue, saying, mm. what have we learned from the civil war? Have we been able to truly forgive ourselves? Have we been able to move past it? Are we, are we still hiding under the guise of, you know, like, remember at the time when history was scrapped from our curriculum and there's just this mystery shrouded around it, you know, Nigerians trying to hide this, not wanting to come to the realization of the fact that we do need our history if we're to progress and move forward. But the great thing is that at the end of the day, the war was over, the war ended, and uh, we saw uh, Yakubu Gowon coming out to say, no victor, no vanquished. You know, he, he began the process of reconciliation, rehabilitation, reconstruction, right? And that led to the creation of the NYSC, the National Youth Service Corps scheme, saying there's so much tribalism, there's so much ethnicity, there's, we need to come together as one, realize that we are one nation, and that we need, to, we need to do that from the scratch and get Nigerians to mix, mix to other parts of the country. You know, if you're from the South, let's send you to the North, experience the culture, love them, and let the people get to know you for who you are. I remember I was posted to Adamawa State for my NYC, and even though most people run away because of insecurity, I stayed back and I don't regret it. I found a part, or I saw parts of Northerners that I would have never known if I hadn't lived or stayed with them. They're very hospitable people and all of that. So, but the great thing is that the NYC is still in, is still, is still in progress. We're still, you know, Nigerians are able to intermarry, 
We've seen cases where people, you know, go to the north or people come from the north to the south, able to intermarry. So we're seeing that that uh, ethnic tension is not as terrible as it was before. But the thing is that, oh. that we still have a long way to go. We well. still have a long way to go. And uh, let's hope that uh, we, can, we can be able to bridge the ethnic divide and you know, come together as one truly united nation. So there is uh, you know, aspects of this you know, that I agree with. You know, the fact that, you know, you know, the, of course, um, there were moves that were made to reconcile and to reconstruct and you know, bring people together. Um, but it doesn't change or take away the you know, fact that um, tribe and religion has continued to be a major factor that has um, basically you know, decided the way that the country has been run for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. um, the very reason that there was a counter coup in the first place was because this was seen as an Igbo coup, not simply as a coup that you know, happened you know, you know, with, um, you know, by army officers in the, you know, officers of the Nigerian army. It was seen as an Igbo coup. The people who then eventually championed the counter coup were from the north. And so if we don't, like you mentioned, um, history was taken away you know, from our curriculum for a bit. Um, if we don't start to actually have certain conversations, we will never really be honest with ourselves and accept you know, some of the mistakes that we made you know, from the past and we're still making till today. Um, there's still talk about um, nepotism in Nigeria today in 2020, 2021. Uh, there's still, you know, those type of discussions uh, about, you know, certain parts of the country being favored and certain parts of the country being uh, hated or, you know, or being, um, you know, being relegated. Um, relegated. There, is, there is still those conversations going on today. Um, one thing that I would also say that we've also failed to do is have a very honest conversation about the Civil War. The 1966 coup happened. Um, the counter coup happened, you know, much later, you know, the same year. The civil war started in 1967. It was three years of, of a very, very dark time for Nigeria. Led to the death of, you know, people have estimated about three million Nigerians, you know, mostly from the southeast, um, that were murdered, you know, simply because of the coup. There was, um, of course, the part where they were, you know, they used hunger as a tool of war back then. Um, but until we get to a place where we can truly have conversations about the mistakes that we made back then, uh, we may not never really, really move forward. When you bring up these conversations, a lot of people get very, very irritated. Yes, it's a and very emotional. sensitive con conversation for certain people um, who don't want to accept that mistakes were made, who don't want to accept that you know they they erred um, you know in in that time. Um, the Igbos also are very, very, very sensitive about these things because they also have heard and they've, you know, been told stories of what happened back then between 67 and, and 70. 70. And so um, we need to have certain conversations. The same way we run to Rwanda almost every year to join them in their commemoration of the Rwandan genocide and pay respect to the dead and, you know, the apologies that are necessary. We need to do the same here exactly. in Nigeria. We, we cannot we be running to Rwanda and forget what happened here in Nigeria. Exactly. And we can't always put, uh, you know, I studied international studies and diplomacy, you know, technically history in school. And you see that much of the curriculum is filled with history of other countries, the American Civil War and all of that. And you find out that just how much time is dedicated in our schools, even for history students, to looking inwards and examining where we're coming from, how far we've come, and uh, looking into the future. Absolutely. Well, uh, that's, that's it. Uh, um, January 15th, 1966. 1966. Let's now look at this day, January 15th, 1929. Martin Luther King Jr. was born. He was born in Atlanta, Georgia. He was the son of a Baptist minister. He received a doctorate degree in theology. And in 1955, he helped organize the first major protest of the African-American civil rights movement. Uh, was called the successful uh, Montgomery bus boycott. King advocated civil disobedience. He advocated non-violent resistance to segregation in the South. What these were often met with violence. He became the youngest person to win the Nobel Peace Prize. In the late 1960s, King openly criticized the U.S. involvement in the Vietnam War and turned his efforts to winning economic rights for poor Americans. In 1968, he was planning a national occupation of Washington, D.C., and this was to be called the Poor People's Campaign. When he was assassinated on April 4th in Memphis, Tennessee, he was fatally shot at 6.01 p.m. on Thursday that April as he stood 
at, on the motel's second floor balcony. His death was followed by, you know, many riots in U.S. Uh, cities. And there was an allegation about his death, about James Earl Ray, the man convicted of killing King, that he had been framed or that he acted in concert with government agents. King was posthumously awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom and the Congressional Gold Medal. He, uh, the Martin Luther King Jr. Day was established as a holiday in cities and states throughout the U.S., and that was beginning in 1971. And the holiday was enacted at the federal level by a legislation signed by President Ronald Reagan in 1986. Wow, King has indeed become a national icon in the history of American liberalism. He was an orator, very powerful speaker. He was able to rally people around when he gave speeches about his ideals, his values, and his dreams for the American society. I mean, remember the I Have a Dream speech that yes. has become so, so popular. And uh, it's so sad to see just how much of, you know, the, the situation of what it was at that time in America is still prevalent today. Today. Um. He, he, he will, you know, always be one of those names that, you know, would never be erased from history, mostly because of the steps that he took uh, for the black community. There's people who would also always criticize him um, and say that, you know, he, he sometimes also played to uh, both sides. Uh, but, you know, for the greater good and for, the, you know, the stance that he had, uh, he would always, always be remembered. I wish that we would have um, same here in Nigeria. Um, and uh, see people who would actually stand up for what they believe is truth and we stand do. up for the people. Yeah, we I mean, do yeah, have civil Kensaro rights Wiwa. activists, we do. Um, but you know how the government yeah. reacts to uh, dissent. Always. Well, anyway, um, yes, in 19, what, 20? 1929 was when Martin Luther King Jr. Was, was born. And also in 1966, the... Uh, well, I, I hate to call it the evil coup, but that's, that's what it's popularly called. But um, the coup, you know, that ousted um, and led to the death of uh, Tafawa Balewa um, happened today in 1966. That's what we have for you today in history. We are now going to be moving to the Niger Delta, where apparently there is some crisis with pirates. It's a conversation that is not popularly had across the country because... Um, for some reason, you know, they, they, these are criminals that just exist, but, you know, do not make it into the national discourse a lot of times. And so we're going to be talking about a protest that happened a few days ago where people from Bonny Island had to walk to Government House and to the National Assembly in River State to demand an end to piracy and better security in those regions. That comes up right after this short break. Uh, stay here with us.